Hello everybody, welcome to another ODAC webinar. Today we will be discussing the ODAC Touch Training Update 2.5.1. First of all, I would like to thank my colleague in the chat box who will assist you if you have any um, technical questions regarding the webinar. And at the end of this um, uh, presentation, we will be doing a live demo so I can demonstrate all the new features of ODAC Touch 2.5.1. So let's get started. Remember that ODAC Touch 2 can provide you with a total um, system control, meaning that if you like uh, to have a dashboard that can control your entire system with multiple devices, you can do that on one dashboard. You can create custom dashboards with fully scalable widgets, and also it's freely downloadable for multiple platforms. It's important to know that if you install ODAC Touch 2, that you remove all previous versions on your device to get a clean install. So ODAC Touch 2 is a widget-based cross-platform control application providing you with a total system control. It communicates through TCP IP to our devices. An ODAC Touch 2 application is different to other applications thanks to its wide control possibilities, but especially its intuitive way of setup and use. So the ODAC Touch 2 provides you with a dashboard that is built up of different widgets that you can freely scale and select and just drag and drop in place. As I said before, it's freely downloadable for multiple platforms such as Android, um, iOS, Linux, and Windows. Its most unique features. So, um, as you know, Audac Touch has an automatic device discovery, meaning when it's once installed, it will scan your local network uh, for any new devices and it will keep track of that. And beyond that, you can add a custom device if it's in a different VLAN. So it's very easy to use. It also comes with, uh, for example, an M2 with mixing functionalities. Um, besides that, as I said, free scalable and placeable uh, widgets to create your own dashboard. And it also supports professional license audio streaming thanks to the NMP40, which it can be combined with Spotify or Soundtrack, your brand. Besides that, we added the BMP40 Bluetooth module support. We integrate most of the flash functionalities. We have a commander control that can provide you with either third-party control or control custom control of our own devices, ODAC devices. And we improved the user interface, so we did not only implement uh, the old Flash functionality, we also tried to give it an update to get um, a cleaner view and a nicer setup. So let's talk about that commander function. We have to divide it in two parts, meaning that either it can control, as we like to call it, third-party uh, devices like, let's say, uh, a projector or a television set or whatever. It can be done from one single dashboard and it can be used to either send ASCII or HEX commands. It could be controlled by TCP IP, but also if, let's say, your device does not have a TCP IP connection, but only a serial connection, you can use an APC 100 to act as a bridge between the third-party device and ODAC Touch to control it. Besides that, the commander function can also be used to control our own ODAC devices um, because you can create custom commands for it. An example would be like, let's say for an M2, the mute function where in normal circumstances you would have a mute button for every uh, zone output but you can create a custom command that can uh, mute multiple zones with the push of one button.
So let's see again what is compatible with what. So the supported devices for ODAC Touch 2 are, of course, our matrixes, as they are the M2, R2, and the MTX device. Also, our amplifier range, so the AMP523, the SMA, SMQ, and PMQ range. And if they are um, equipped with the ANI 44XT module, you can give full uh, control of that amplifier, as we will see later on. Although remember that for SMA, SMQ, and PMQ, you would need the latest firmware update, uh, which we are about to release in the following weeks. It can also be used to control an AMP203 and, of course, the MFA range. Besides that, also our audio players, XMP44, TMP40, IMP40, the MMP40, BMP40, FMP40, DMP40, and NMP40, all source com uh, modules. I will not go in detail, I think they're all familiar now, um, but um, you will find all information also on our website. Also, our relay units, as they are the ARU 204 and 208, four eight way uh, relay units, and of course, as said, third party control. You can send any uh, TCP IP command with the push of one button. So, we talked about version 2.5.1. What's new in this version? Well, first of all, we integrated the complete wave dynamics uh, uh, solution. It will be um, a, a tool that you can create to make custom settings, filter settings, uh, as we will see later on. As you can see in the screen, that feature is not available on smaller screens like your cell phone. You would need a bigger screen to, uh, to be um, fully, um, to, to give full support on that uh, function. Besides that, we added an offline mode, which allows you to, let's say, if you go uh, on site and you do not have an interconnect internet connection it's not required to uh, to log in on our service to verify your credentials you can use the app or odec touch offline we will see uh, later on an example how that works besides that as i said easy control of the sma smq pmq uh, series through odec touch 2.51 if you have an ANI 44XT module installed. We also added the temperature indication, a widget that allows you to read out the temperature of our amplifiers. So let's take a look at Wave Dynamics Configurator. So we have completely redeveloped um, the Wave Dynamics Configurator. The Wave Dynamics Configurator, our tool in the ODAC System Manager, to quick and easy edit presets, is now available in the app. So the Wave Dynamics Configurator consists of two elements. On one hand, you have WaveTune, which is um, or a tool that provides installers and end users with an uh, intuitive tool for adjusting audio processing. So. At the moment, it replaces the uh, EQ functionality, but we aim to include all types of filters for management with WaveTube. On the other hand, you have Wave Preset, which gives uh, the installer um, a quick and easy tool for setting uh, filter presets to optimize the sound of connected speakers. That tool enables you to create or import uh, SOL and uh, SPF files as presets and you have access to ODAC soul files directly but you can also create your own personal uh, presets and then uh, export them to a file to load in your amplifier that is wave dynamics so the offline mode we created the offline mode because there was a demand uh, of our installers who maybe due to let's say strict IT regulation on site 
where it was impossible to have an internet connection, you would go on site and you could not uh, log in uh, on our Duck Touch app, which um, prevented you from doing the scan list. You could not find your device. So there was a demand to have some kind of um, an offline mode um, so that you can scan your local network that you're connected to and only find those devices that are at that point connected in the network. Remember that the database of all your devices is kept in Odak Touch, and it could be that you have a huge list of devices in your uh, device list, which can make things complicated if you want to isolate that one device that you want to control. It's also for uh, maybe setting up uh, a quick and easy offline configuration when, when you want to give a demo. But remember that the device needs to be physically attached to the network in order to control it and offline. More of that later on. So for the SMI, SMA, SMQ series and PMQ control, if you have the ANI 44 XT installed Dante module, you can control and configure it directly from the touch app. So you would need the ANI 44 XT to act as a bridge between um, Audac Touch and the DSP uh, processor on board. Besides that, temperature indication, as we talked earlier about, you can read out the temperature of your end stages in your amplifier to see uh, if everything is working smoothly. Support devices on this uh, specific uh, widget are of course the PMQ, SMA and SMQ series. Okay, now, brief introduction. Let's see how this works in Audac Touch. First of all, I would like to show you When we go to touch, let's start from scratch. Remember that we talked about um, the login. Yeah, first of all, when you log in, what happens is maybe a brief summary for you guys who are not that familiar. When you create your user account, you can have multiple user accounts on the same email address on the same company. No problem there. When you uh, create your user, please do not forget to validate the, uh, the email that we sent you. You will need it in case you lost, in case of a lost password and you want to retrieve it, but you did not validate, it will not be possible to retrieve your password. So remember to confirm the email that we sent you after the user creation. So I will log in with my account. And let's take a look at the first thing we talked about, Wave Dynamics. So this is my basic screen. I do have a small dashboard, but Wave Dynamics is located under the menu section. You will find it here, Wave Dynamics. And as you can see, it tells me that I have not created any presets yet. You will see two uh, tabs on the top of the screen, My Presets and ODAC Presets. We already made a library for you guys under ODAC Presets, where you can have a, a list of predefined presets that we created for you, where you click on the three dots and you can duplicate them and they will come into your My Presets tab. So if we go to my presets, and I do not have any presets, I can start from scratch with a new one, or I can load one of these by simply duplicate them and they will show up in my preset list. In this case, I will delete it and I will start with a complete new one. So let's create a new one. This is the graphical representation of my uh, filter where I can add filters by simply clicking the plus icon. It will add a filter and I can play around with my first filter settings. 
as you can see, you have the frequency where it's located. You have the Q factor of my first filter, and I have the boost level, like that. I can add another one by clicking the plus icon. I have a second one. I can add a third one, as many as I like. Now, these are peaking uh, filters, but if I show my table by clicking here, you will see they are type peaking, but I can easily change it by clicking on it and say, for example, this needs to be a low shelf, number one, or a high shelf for number two. Here I can add other filters, like again, for example, um, a peaking. And when I go back, I can place them wherever I like. This is maybe not the best filter I created, but it doesn't matter. It's just for showing what the possibilities are. So when you have created the filter, and remember that for this global filter settings, you also have the gain adjustment. I can do whenever I'm happy with my filter, or I would say I would like to remove, remove number four. You click on the bin and you click on four and four is gone. When I'm happy with my filter, I can save it. I can have, for example, new preset. If I click on the advanced tab, I can change the name for this filter. I would like to call it test. You can also select the dynamic bass boost, the invert phase, bridge settings, the limiter, the standby seconds for that specific uh, channel or filter. For the NOBA 8 active, we do have an attack, decay, and sustain parameter that you can specify. But in this case, I would like to make a simple uh, filter setting that is called test. Save. If I go back to my filters, this is my filter setting. And if I go back to my overview, I would like to save it. And I go back, you will see I have created a test filter. This is one way to do it. Create your own custom filter. I can also say I want to import uh, a predefined filter settings that we provide you, for example, on our website. And I'll give you an example of that one. So if I go to my USB stick, I have already downloaded the Vexo 8 solution file. I would like to open that one. And as you can see, I have, for example, two filter settings that I can edit. And this is the filter setting that we provide you on our website. That's the second thing uh, to do. So if you have your presets and you want to load them in your device, you would you would need to put it on a USB stick and load it in your amplifier for an SMQ, for example. Before we do that, I can do, for example, an export where you have to define the device that you want to load your preset into. In this case, I want to load it into an SMQ. I can create a sole file or a speaker file. So a speaker file is only one filter settings for one uh, speaker that you can load and select on the channel that you, you would like on your amplifier. So when I make a speaker file and I load it in the SMQ, it will ask me to load whether on channel one, two, three, four, or multiple channels. If you create a solution file, I can already specify, for example, that I want to load my test filter on channel one and my Vexo Sol 1 on channel 2 and output 3 Vexo Sol 1. This is a solution file. 
multiple channels. You click next, you give your well a name, reset Chris, next, and your file has been generated and is ready for download. In this case, when I click download, I can put it on my USB stick. That's been done. So I do now have USB stick with multiple filter settings on it, which I can load into my uh, SMQ. I will show you by clicking my device, SMQ in my touch rack will be twenty four. Go to settings, outputs. You will see here wave tune and wave preset. What we talked about, these are the two uh, sections on my amplifier. I will now take my USB stick. I will plug it into the SMQ. I will go to general setup. USB load. And I will select preset Chris. And as you can see, it has now been loaded on the wave preset on channel one, two, and three. We didn't do anything with channel four. If I now select out one and I look at my wave preset simply by clicking on it, you will see that this is the uh, file I just loaded. Also for channel two, and of course, channel three so as you can see this now has been loaded into my amplifier i can still play around with it so let's say i want to adjust this one uh, this is possible by for example adjusting the filter settings remember that these settings are all live when i'm uh, when i have a speaker connected and i'm listening to it all the adjustments I make, you will hear them immediately on your setup. So wave preset, remember, is the preset for uh, speaker setup, where wave tune replaces the EQ. I can simply change my EQ settings here, simply by changing them. Or if I go to my SMQ, I'm now on channel one and i select on channel one my eq under output settings eq settings and let's say i want to change the one kilohertz setting you will see when i change it on the amplifier that audac touch will automatically follow by just adjusting it so this is a very nice feature when you want to tweak your installation um, on site whenever you make a change you will see that the uh, icon will turn blue indicating that this is a custom setup that you just loaded or adjusted okay wave dynamics when we go back to wave dynamics and remember that on export import you can select a file from a website. Export, you need to place it on USB stick to load it into a certain amp, or you can make your own custom uh, filter settings by creating just a new one. Okay, that being said, back to user, going to log out. Going to log back in because I want to show you guys first of all my device list. Since remember or touch remembers every device that was uh, ever scanned in my network, you will see I have a lot of devices in my uh, scan list. They can uh, be, uh, for example, in the range uh, 10 to 8, another one 10 to 3 or even uh, other devices, 129, and so on, and so on. So every device that was ever scanned is in my device list. 
if I go on site and I just want to make a brief um, change to the setting of a device, and I go on site and I do not have an internet connection or the IT guys do not uh, allow me to go on the internet, remember that in Odac Touch, when you log out and you want to log in, you will need an internet connection because it needs to validate your credentials on our server. In some cases, that's not what you want, and you can create an offline session. What an offline session does is, if I click here, it will only scan the local network that my network adapter is in. I'm now in range of 10.28, uh, and it will scan that network for all devices. You will see that it will only find devices in this range. I can still add a device from another VLAN if that is necessary. But as you look now, I can simply uh, select one of those devices and change settings. You do not have the possibility to create a dashboard, which is of course not necessary. And you only have access to user and devices tab. That's all you have. So let's say I want to make a brief um, uh, set up on uh, my amplifier here, the SMQ. I simply click on it. You would need to know the supervisor password, otherwise you do not have access. You can save it and I can, for example, change the volume or setting or whatever the things I need to change. That is offline mode. Do not confuse it with uh, offline mode as in I want to add, for example, uh, an SMQ, which is not online, but I still want to give a demo. Remember that your device needs to be physically attached to the network in order to control it and give your demo. So a very handy tool if you want to uh, log out, you just click on user and end your offline session. And you can log back in with your normal username. Okay. So we talked about wave dynamics, wave presets, uh, wave tune. Let's now see how we can control uh, our amplifier range, our SMQ. This is new and was not was possible in the past with an APC 100, but I think it's best if you add an ANI 44XT because it gives you a lot more functionality and, and, and more possibilities to control uh, your amplifier. In this case, it's on 102824. Select my device. And as you can see, this is the standard screen I get. For example, output one, I can select the inputs, change the inputs, Dante channels, if I have selected them, I can change the volume. And you will see if I change the volume on the amp, that it also changes on touch. So very nice to control uh, the amplifier. I can also mute uh, the outputs if you like. In the settings tab, if you go over them, you have in the device tab, you have your device address. In this case, an amplifier will always be addressed as uh, Q, for example, 001. You can change it and save it. You can give a custom name to your amplifier. In this case, it's B TouchRec SMQ 350. You can read out the firmware version, where you can see now that my ANI has a uh, uh, firmware version 1.2.0 and the SMQ has version 2.1.5. Uh, Remember that this feature or this uh, firmware version for the SMQ, PMQ and SMA is not yet available. It will come within the following weeks, but for this time uh, you will be able to control your device if you um, flash it with the 208, the latest release version, but remember that you do not have um, access to wave preset and wave tune and delay.
that will come later on but still you will be able to control your uh, device by selecting the input and volume you can see the time that your device has been active in this case for four hours and 39 minutes you can change an admin password or a user password and for the ani 44 xd installed you can select whether it needs to communicate uh, through multicast or uh, broadcast. Make sure that your network that you're connected to supports uh, this uh, function. And last, you can do uh, a complete reset of your um, device. So, back to the inputs. As you can see, the inputs, I can change the gain of my input. I can change when clicking on the gear icon, the name of my input, save. So it has been changed now. You have your Dante channels that you can rename if necessary. And if you change them in Dante control, your SMQ will automatically follow. This for the input section. Your output section, same story here. You can mute it, your output. You can specify a max volume that you can uh, not uh, uh, go over, a delay function. As discussed before, wave tune with all your uh, EQ parameters. Show a table with all the types. You can enable or disable your filter settings. In this case, it's flat because I did not choose any filter. I can also change the output name. For example, by save. Antiphase on off. The status of what your amplifier is in. In this, in this case, it's active. You can specify your standby timeout. If you say, I want to, with no input signal attached, I want to uh, my amplifier to go in standby after 30 seconds. Save. Dynamic bass boost, if it's on or off. The temperature of the amplifier uh, at this time. And also the selectable inputs that you can uh, select on your control screen. So let's say I do not wish to have Dante channel three and four. Throw four also in the bin. The advanced output settings, no power limit, but you can say I want, for example, enable power limit at a max of 250 watts, for example. And you save. Also here, bridging enabled or not enabled. Touch link will be for future release. So I changed the input settings for the foyer. If I go to control, remember that if I select inputs, that uh, you can have the input list here that you can select. So controlling your uh, SMQ, SMA, PMQ by adding an ANI 44 XT module. Okay, so the temperature widget I would like to show you in our dashboard. And let's create or make a custom dashboard where I already added the uh, temperature uh, indication for our device. If I switch on my SMQ back to show you guys, I can edit my dashboard, add a widget, in this case for the uh, SMQ ANI. I have one device on my touch rack and the temperature widget can be selected on, for example, the foyer 
I would like to add another one on channel 2, for example, that will do. And as you can see, freely scalable, this is my widget for channel. You save your dashboard, go back, and you will see the, the temperature of the end stages uh, on your dashboard. This is a new widget that we added. That being said, was a short uh, summary of the new features we talked about in uh, Odac Touch version 2.5.1. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that we're currently on working on a release for uh, 2.5.2 and in future releases 2.6, but that's for the future. Meantime, you can download it on our website. It's version at this point, of course, if you look at your device list at the bottom, you can see your version 2.5.1. Download it. Uh, most of you guys already uh, will have it. Play around with it. Install an ANI 44XT to control your amplifier. Remember that still wave preset, wave dynamics, uh, wave preset, wave tune will require uh, the latest update on your SMQ amplifier uh, for uh, the next following weeks. We will be able to release that version also. Make sure all your devices are up to date um, because that's very important to give full uh, to be fully compatible with uh, Odac Touch. Okay, so only thing for me to do now is if you want updates or more news, visit our website. Um, for any questions, we will be available in the chat box for a few moments. Ask your questions and all I need to say is thank you and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.